Taylor here and I am going to explain this cool trick that will help you in math. It's called cross reducing, also known as cross canceling, also known as cross simplifying. And that's that key word here is simplifying. So this trick will hopefully help you simplify your math and it'll just make it worlds easier. So give it a try, do your best to understand it. And if you truly don't get what I'm doing at all, please reach out to your teacher or any math teacher or really anybody that understands this because I'm telling you, it will help you. So let's give it a go. Okay, beauties, we're gonna set up our notes how we always do. We are still in 7.3B. It's basically just all operations, <laughs> operations, all operations with all rational numbers. We are specifically dealing with fractions though. Our essential question that we're going to be answering is what is and how do I cross reduce? We have a vocabulary term, which is essentially cross-reducing. Cross-canceling is an action taken in a multiplication problem involving fractions, also known as, AKA, cross-reduce and cross-simplify. So, the one thing I need you guys to be very aware of is that this is involving fractions and it has to involve multiplication. Those are our key words here. This cross-reducing trick doesn't work with any other problem. It has to be multiplication. I cannot stress that enough. Our steps. Step number one, set up your fraction multiplication problem. Step number two, look for common factors across, across from each other. Numerator to denominator and denominator to numerator. So we are not going straight. We're not going from top to top and bottom to bottom. We're going from top to bottom and bottom to top. We're going across. Step number three, divide by the common factor. Step number four, repeat as many times as needed. So we're gonna go through some examples. I would like you to take all these examples down. I am going to do this all in the same color, but if you have two different colors, I suggest you color code. So, example number one. I have 14 fifteenths times five sevenths. Now I'm going to look across to see if there's any factors that they have in common. So I'm looking at 15 and five, and I know that they have a common factor of five. So I'm going to reduce both of these by five. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. I'm going to do that same process for 14 and 7. I know that they have a common factor of 7, so I'm going to reduce them both, and when I say reduce, I mean divide, by 7. 14 divided by 7 is 2, and 7 divided by 7 is 1. Now, doesn't that make my multiplication so much easier? I think it is way easier to multiply two times one and three times one than to multiply 14 times five and 15 times seven and then reduce when I'm done. So I want you guys to notice that we're reducing in the problem itself and not in the answer. So it's gonna make our multiplication a heck of a lot easier. Let's do it again. Looking at this problem number two, I have one half times 10 thirteenths. I'm going to be looking across to see if they have any common factors. Now one and 13 are both prime numbers and they cannot be reduced because one can't get any smaller than one. Two and 10 have a common factor of two. So I'm going to reduce both of these by two. Two divided by two is one and 10 divided by two is five. Now multiplying straight across, I'm gonna do one times five and one times 13. Again, making my multiplication problem so much easier. Let's do it again. I have four times three sixteenths. Since this is a whole number, I am going to put it over one just to kind of help me keep my fraction straight. I'm gonna be looking across at one and three they can't get any smaller than they are. Looking at four and 16, I have a common factor of, well, I have a common factor of two and I have a common factor of four. I'm going to use a common factor of four because it's my greater common factor and that way I won't have to repeat this. So four divided by four is one and 16 divided by four is four. 
multiplying straight across, one times three is three, and one times four is four. Last problem. This is a really ugly one. So I want you guys to notice how much easier it's gonna make this problem if I cross simplify. So first thing is I have to change this from a mixed number to an improper fraction. Three times 10 plus one is 31 over 10 times 20 over 93. Now, there is no way that I'm gonna want to multiply 10 times 93 and 31 times 20 and then reduce my answer in the end. I can cross simplify and make that so much easier. So let's do the 10 and 20 because that's something we can easily see. 10 and 20 have a common factor of five and a common factor of 10. I'm gonna use a greater common factor of 10. 10 divided by 10 is one. 20 divided by 10 is two. Now 31 and 93 have a common factor. 31 is a prime number, but if you notice, 93 is just 31 times three. 93 is a multiple of 31. So I can reduce both of these by 31. Oh my goodness. One times two is two and one times three is three. This big old ugly problem came out to be so easy when I cross simplified. So the biggest trick with this guys is looking across and finding your GCF, your greatest common factor and then reducing both numbers by that. That's it guys, if you need help understanding any of this, please reach out. I really want you guys to be able to do this in math. It will make your fraction life so much easier.